it's Nia Noel from the Afternoon Drive on Power 175, and I have my special guest. Well, actually, let me tell you where I am. I am in a hidden treasure, or as I like to say, hidden treasure downtown Columbus, over here at Ballet Met, and I have one of the choreographers for the upcoming production coming up. <laughs> and tell everybody your name and your background and why you're here. Yes, uh, do, do I look? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> <Either way. laughs> Hey you guys, uh, my name is Darrell Moultrie, uh, choreographer in town in Columbus, born and raised in New York City. I still currently live there. I freelance, travel around the country and the world, freelancing as a choreographer. And I'm in town for the American Legends production. It's the final production of the Ballet Company that uh, it's going to celebrate three American legends. Stevie Wonder, which everybody knows, Johnny Cash, which everyone knows, and also Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, and it's a, it's a production that will have three different pieces that will use the music of those artists. And I'm scheduled here to choreograph this, the uh, Sammy Davis Jr. section. So when is opening day? Tell me about when it starts and everything, because I know that's going to be a big, that's a big important thing. So yeah. people come out. When's opening day? Opening night is April 23rd. Okay, and, and it April, runs to? It runs till May 1st. May 1st. Yes, and it's about three shows each weekend. Uh -huh. So April 23rd at 8 p.m. Okay. And then you have a Saturday show at 8 p.m. And then you have a Sunday show, a matinee. And I'm going to be at the April 23rd show. So oh, great. Come to the I'll April 23rd there. show. You can see me in. So I'll be there too. His yeah. work and everything. <laughs> So tell me about exactly your feeling and what you want to uh, evoke with your choreography for the St. Davis Jr. pieces that you're doing. Yeah, what I, what the feeling I wanted to evoke uh, live energy, the live energy. Sammy was a performer who performed live. Uh, he, was one, he was one of those performers that I don't think got his just due right. uh, when he left us. Uh, his music kind of died, his legacy died with his uh, turmoils his tax problems, but I think the music and his performing was so amazing that anybody who were his fans are will be thrilled to hear his music and his music for new younger audiences, it's infectious. So I went with Sammy because he was somebody who his music was untouchable. Right. And it also like you said the young people, they may know of him but not really know about him. Do you think that this would give them a whole new light? Sammy? A whole new life. I think it'll give them a whole new life, a whole new life with Sammy and a whole new life with looking at how we view ballet. Okay. Uh, I'm born and raised in Harlem and when, you know, usually when I come into a dance company, people see me and they don't think I'm going to do what I do. But I'm, I, was, I went to the Fame High School in New York. Okay. I graduated Juilliard uh, and I still teach in Harlem and throughout Harlem. Uh, and I think it's important for our audiences to change the way we view things. Today I had an African American, we had an open rehearsal, an African American mother came with her two kids and she saw it on the news. Uh -huh. And she just said, this was amazing, I'm so glad I did this. And I was so happy to see her because I wanted to push the fact that we have to get out and expand our vision for ourselves and our children. Right. So I think something like ballet, you think like white tights, tutus, and people are running around, jumping yeah, around. Yeah, stale, more. Stale, yeah, yeah, yeah. So much more. And there's so much more. And even the classics are not stale if you really go out and give them a chance. But a program like this, it helps introduce the audiences to ballet in a, from a different angle. So how do you take Stevie Wonder and add ballet? It's amazing. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, you got to see it. And, and also, if you take Sammy Davis Jr., I'm bringing also a live tap dancer now who's going to work with the dancers. So there'll be tap dancing and ballet, contemporary ballet. Right. Uh, and it's more jazz too, so it's funkier, it's edgy, it has syncopation, it has groove to it. So it's hot. You yeah, know? So, so I, you've got like a modern twist, Yeah. but with the classics. A modern met. twist with still needing that classical technique to get through it. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it makes it for a younger audience, they immediately say, I want to do that, because it's funkier. Right. So it's like taking ballet, twisting it, making it edgy and funky. So this is the time when audiences say, I think, I'll, I, think I want to see ballet someday, or I don't ever want to see it. This is when you go see it, so then you can see it from a whole different angle. And I don't think a lot of people realize that ballet is not just what they think it is. Not just, just the nutcracker. Not just the nutcracker, <laughs> no, yeah. More, it's going to be just exciting and even more exciting and thrilling. Right. 
So, uh, did you get to choose which Sammy songs you wanted to use? Oh yeah, that was the hard. How part. did you come with your process? Yeah, I had to. I when I picked Sammy, I had to start to go through his his, uh, his catalog okay. and pick. I only have a half hour for my piece, mm -hmm. so I had to pick songs that that would add up to about a half hour. So I had to go through all of his songs, which was so hard because this man has so many songs. It's like picking your favorite artist, only a certain amount that you can pick. Right. Uh, so I found nine songs that I like. Songs like Mr. Bojangles, Candyman is one of his famous songs. Uh, what Kind of Fool Am I? He also sings a cover version of Ladies and Trap, okay. which everybody knows Ladies and Trap. Yeah. Everybody's done that one. Uh, a song called Any Place I Hang My Hat Is Home, and a lot of other songs. So I wanted to, I had to go through his, his catalog to get these. So I want to know, are they, when you put your, your uh, piece together. Is it one continuous story or you have a block here, a block here? What do you, what are you doing? Yeah, with your piece? so it's, it's not a, it's not autobiographical. Mm -hmm. It's a it's it, it took nine different songs and wove them and connected them so that the story the piece has an arc. Okay. So it starts off with one huge dance number, then it goes into a solo for a female, then it goes into a, a, a trio, trio of duets. Uh, and then it goes into another group section, then it goes into a duet with a tap dancer and a ballet dancer, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's this duet they do downstage. Uh -huh. uh, so it weaves, and the music just the music tells its own story. Each music is its own right. life, each so section. You've got almost like your own story within. Within, yeah, the yeah. music tells the story. It's beautiful, I'm so excited. So yeah. how many dancers do you have in your piece? I have 10 dancers mm -hmm. and one soloist, so altogether 11. And when I get here on the first day, I have an audition with it. I watch them do movement. I watch them take class. So you picked your dancers. Oh, I picked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what were you looking for? Looking for people who are not afraid to be open and crazy. People who won't follow the pack. People who are not afraid to move and just use their legs and jump high and just have a lot of energy and excitement. And I like personalities. Yeah. So there's a dancer who has on like a a wild color or the hair is a little twisted to the side. <laughs> yeah. I like that dancer, the yeah. one who tries to look different. Because usually they dance differently. Uh -huh. The ones who have a kind of presence, a leadership quality. Okay. Yeah. And so how do you think that yours is going to be different from the other two pieces that are in the same time, the American Yeah, I think, uh, well, first, I think they're all the same because mm -hmm. they're all equally amazing. But I think mine will be different just because Sammy was so different than those two performers, and that's the beauty of this concert. Uh, Stevie is his own genius. Yeah. Johnny Cash is his own genius. Yeah. They all have their own worlds. Uh, and I think Sammy was that, he was that triple threat. He was the dancer, he was the singer, he was the actor. So his music has the orchestrations and his live voice. We use his voice uh, in it where he's just oh. speaking. So. He has so much. He's more. He's more of a uh, triple threat than okay. the other, other three. And with mine, we incorporate live tap dancing. Right. And the other two couldn't tap dance. <laughs> no, you so might stick out a little. Yeah, this is gonna stick out because <laughs> we have a live tap dancer flying in from New York who currently tours with Savion Glover, oh, okay. who is the best in America. Amazing. So he's his right hand man. So it's one of those. It's one of those instances, a rare instance, where we have a real hooker who will be on the stage with the dancers. Yeah. So I think it's important to, you know, I think it's important to do that, and that's why that this piece will stand out from the rest, because Sammy was so different. So it's definitely, it sounds like you choreographed something for the masses, not necessarily the, the arts enthusiast. It sounds like it's just... This is for the masses. Uh, we had an open rehearsal today with all different people, mm -hmm. and everyone was so happy, young and old. Uh, and it's for the masses. And I think each piece, actually, I saw some other rehearsals, they're all for the masses. Yeah. Yes, it's for you to bring the family. It's, I, and I'm talking dads, yeah. grandmoms, granddads, yeah. children, yeah. mothers. It's not just about the mother and the daughters or the mother and the sons. Or the, it's for everybody. Right. Yeah. So are you, are you ready for opening night? Are you ready? We're getting close. Yeah. yeah. We have two weeks, so there's a lot of cleaning and like, whoosh. Yeah. You yeah, know, to make it tight. <laughs> crack it away. Yeah, crack that whip and make it tight and exciting. Yeah. You know, you want to give the audience the best. Yeah. So now we're just in the phase of you know, we got the vacuum and we're cleaning. We're making things Five tight. Stages. Yeah. If I, if we do a step together and I go like this and you go like that. It's like no, you have to do like this right. with me so that me and you look we're together. So now it's just the final stages of doing the, the, uh, the cleaning. Okay. Well, I cannot wait. Opening night. 
on the 23rd of this month. Yes. Two weeks away. Two weeks away. Two weeks away. Yeah. Today. Yeah. 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 Two weeks from today. Reality, right? Yeah. <laughs> And when, when, when does it run through again? Tell me. It please. runs through May 1st. May the 1st. So you yes. have plenty of time to get your tickets called Ballet Met. And um, also, we'll have a link on our website too where you can go through and get tickets yeah. with Ballet Met. Ballet Thank you. BalletMet.org Ballet is where you can get your tickets and information. And I thank you so much for taking time out of the thank rehearsals you. and oh, everything yeah. to hang no out problem. and chop it up with me. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it.